Greetings. This is TK Trav, aka Travis Magus, here with LVX777. And today I'd like to talk about the singularity. Now, from science and transhumanism and all this stuff, they speak about an event where technology will advance so far that it will surpass human ingenuity, human brilliance. And uh, essentially, the machines that we've created will go beyond us, leaving us in the dust, whatever that may mean. Some people suggest that at that point, man will merge with machine, and um, the idea of organic human life will come to an end. But I have to disagree with that, because I think that's taking it too literally. And usually, evolutionary events, like something like that, it's not completely one-sided. Usually when things like that happen, everything on the planet is upgraded. When I, when I think of the singularity, concerning like how the system works with inorganic beings and organic beings, and uh, if you're unfamiliar with those terms, Basically, from what I understand, inorganic beings are the things that we call spirits and angels and demons. They're essentially uh, energy that has a personality that you're able to utilize. What that is, is a very concentrated amount of information and data that's coalesced into one point. So when you summon an angel or a demon, you're summoning the representative of that information. That's how we're able to contact angels and demons and all these spirits. And when you hear a response, it's because you're tapping into the source code of the universe. Even your scientists will tell you that the universe is based on mathematics. It's based on algorithms. Like I said before, the Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio, phi... All these different things are algorithms that occur in nature. And that signifies that nature is built upon the principles of mathematics. So when I say that angels and demons and spirits are algorithms, what I'm saying is that you're tapping into your subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is closely connected with nature and the source that we call God. This type of energy speaks in symbolic terms, like numbers. Numbers are symbols, right? Letters are symbols. Pictures are symbols. And this is how inorganic beings communicate. Because words and language, like English and, you know, Spanish or whatever, these are finite. Everything is defined. It's, it's limited. But when you look at pictures and symbols, they say a picture means a thousand words. That means when you see a picture of an elephant, you have different memories to access. When I look at an elephant, I see something that you maybe don't see. So it really depends on the person. It depends on the individual to get the interpretation. With verbal communication and, and written communication, it's very limited. So it's kind of hard to, lose your, to use your imagination. For example, in the English language, it's so difficult for us to define love because, you know, it, it, we just can't quite get a good written definition of it. It's different to everyone. Love is one of those few things that still exists as a complex symbol. We can write about it, but we can't exactly define it. Anything that can be defined is of the realm of illusion. Now to get back to the singularity. What I believe from study and meditation is that we're approaching a time where the inorganic beings which are pure data are now communicating with organic beings like us and 
We're learning how to move forward together as opposed to against each other. Like in the history books and the Bible where the gods and the angels destroy cities worths of people. There's a lack of communication there, you know. There would be one guy standing on the mountain trying to convince everyone else, hey, God is real and he's telling us this. Some of them didn't listen, some did, you know. But we're reaching a time of communication now where everybody really feels a spiritual connection. Some people can't really define what they feel, but everybody feels this. So when I speak of the singularity, what I believe is happening is that we're getting to the point where man is able to think and experience life the same way an inorganic being would. And the inorganic beings are now able to experience life as an organic being. So now that we're having these combined experiences, the difference between the two of us begins to evaporate and we become one because our experiences are the same. When machine is able to think like man and man is able to think like machine, this is the singularity. It's not about one being better than the other. It's about the unification of both of their strengths combined, of both of their weaknesses eliminated. It's called singularity, which is the end of duality, where every opposite and every extreme must experience life separately. I don't know, man. This stuff sounds really heavy. But, um, yeah. Keep reading. Keep studying. Keep doing your own research and your own meditations. Document everything so that when you look back, you can see your growth. I'd like to, uh, offer you the opportunity to join the Mages Society. You can easily find us on Facebook. Just search for the Mages Society. There's a link in the bio. And as always, I wish you peace.